literally one person asked for this video, so I thought, why not? Um, I'm just going to do a short, sweet comparison of the six linear switches I happen to have. Uh, luckily, they're all pretty popular and they're all in stock except for the tangerines. Um, I'm going to compare what I felt using the switch for a good amount of time. I'm not going to do anything like force curve, stem height, type of plastic, blah, blah, blah. Um, because let's be real, it's pretty dull. Uh, most people also compare stock switches. I don't know why, because you know, let's be real, most of us are sad enough to spend hours and hours lubing our switches, so I'll be comparing the lubed versions of the switch. Best place to start both for this video and if you're just getting into custom keyboards is the Gatoron Yellow. I've got the Milky variant. Uh, the other variants are extremely similar, so don't worry about that. Um, it is hands down the best budget switch you're going to find. Um, it's extremely smooth when you lube it. Overall, very good switch. And it's a good basis to compare other switches off of. Um, I give this a 15 out of 30. Also, it's dirt cheap. And it's not basic like a cherry switch. Next up's the Duroc L3 linear switch. It's the one with the smoky housing, pink stem, 65 gram spring. Uh, it's a really good switch, nice snappy spring. I think it's like perfect sort of weight. It's very similar to the Gatron Black Ink. It's a little bit cheaper. I would say if you want a Gatron Black Ink, but you're really under like a tight budget, I'd highly recommend this. They sound almost identical. If you look at my comparison videos, came absolutely dry stock, but if you lube it, it comes nice and thocky. Um, yeah, it's not very unique. It's basically just a budget Gatron Black Ink, I'd say. I think, you know, for the price, you get like 90, 95% of the way to a Black Ink. Um, but for that reason, I'm going to give it a 20 out of 30. Next is the C cubed equals tangerine switch. I got the 62 gram spring light stem variant. Easily the best looking switch I have. Uh, however, it's not... It's not that unique. It sounds a little bit plasticky. It's not clacky. It's not thocky. It doesn't feel that great. Um, however, I tell you right now, it is the hands down smoothest switch you'll get out of the box. I don't know what lube they use, but it definitely looks like some sort of thin oil. Um, and because the housing tolerances are so tight, it's unbelievably smooth. For my comparison video, I actually had to clean these out of the box because when I lubed them, they sounded almost identical. Yeah, so I give these a 21 out of 30. They are a very good switch, but they're not that great. They're not like high 20s. Now the Zeal Telios. I've got the 67 spring weight version here. It's a very pretty switch. Looks really sick with RGB, nice clear housing. Spring weight is perfect for me. Not too heavy, not too light. There's loads of different options. Uh, it's not too clacky. It's not too thocky. It's got its own sort of high pitch sort of not overly plasticky sound. A load of people give it a lot of shit for it being so expensive, but it does feel kind of cool and it does feel like a very premium switch, although it's probably overly priced, but you know, it's kind of a weird flex. One of my personal favorite switches, I would say it gets a 22 out of 30. It just sort of beats out the tangerines. Uh, yeah, Novel Key Creams. They come with a 70 gram spring weight, uh, housing super tight, I didn't film these. Uh, I do admit they come stock out of the box, unlubed completely, and sound absolutely trash. They are super scratchy, super loud. Uh, however, when you lube these, I think it gives it like a really nice, unique, clacky sound. And for me personally, I think I prefer this out of any sort of deep, thocky switch. Um, it, I, there's a reason why I use this with my only GMK keycap set on my daily driver keyboard. Like it's just a super nice switch. I, I'm going to give it a 25 out of 30. Most people will probably disagree with this. A lot of people don't like the creams because they're really scratchy, but I think it just gives it a nice bit of character and they are very unique. Last but not least is the Gatron Black Ink. Comes in a nice looking smoky translucent housing with an 80 gram spring weight. It is relatively heavy and if you go from a lighter switch and then use this all day, you will notice it and you will get a little bit fatigued, but you'll get used to it in a day or so. It's super smooth out the box. When you lube and film it, it's even smoother, as smooth as any of the other switches I've reviewed. It's unbelievably thocky. It is the thockiest linear switch going by far. Like I'm going to use this in my Ramakara board as soon as I get it. I can't wait to use it. 
Um, I don't use it day to day, although I am gonna rate it my highest switch at 26 out of 30. Most other YouTubers tend to rate this switch extremely high, um, and I couldn't agree more. It's a very good switch. Just before I get loads of questions, uh, I rank things out of 30 because it means, if anything in my head, it's easier to categorize the switches. So you've got things between one and 10, which are pretty trash. And I think between 11 and 20 are considered in that average category. And then 21 to 30 are considered very good switches. I'd say a good example to use would be a cherry black switch. I would rate them 20 out of 30 because they're, they're as good as an average switch is gonna get, but they're not say like a vintage cherry black or a retooled cherry black. So they're not gonna be in that higher, very good switch category. Now we've got some very professional graphs. Uh, Nolke Creams are clearly the clackiest switch I've got. The uh, the middle three are all very similar. Uh, the Gatron Yellow there is a very average sounding switch. The Telios are quite high pitched. Uh, the C cubed equals Tangerines are quite plasticky sounding, but they're all quite neutral. Uh, and then further up the chart, we've got a Thoki Linear Duroc L3 and the Thokiest switch, the Gatron Black Ink. A fairly self-explanatory smoothness chart. Nolke creams on the left are by far the scratchiest. Um, middle of the road there, we've got the Gatron yellow. Uh, the top four are pretty smooth and very similar when they're lubed, but a special shout out to the C cubed equals tangerines. They are incredibly smooth stock. Now for the sound test. want to say thanks to all the people that have watched subscribed commented liked my videos i really appreciate it